Hello everyone, I am Dr. Tanmay Vishash, I welcome you all in my channel Tanmay Kim. Today's topic of discussion is one MCQ when the question is in front of you. What is the major product of this reaction? By the way, it's a multi-step reaction. So in this context, I request you student look at the steps and the reagent carefully. I request please pause the video, try by yourself and whatever answer you get, please write in the comment box along with few words as explanation. Don't worry, after some time you'll have the right answer with explanation. Now I believe you have tried, so let's start. So since it's actually a multi-step reaction, so let's go step by step. Now if you look at this, this is actually an alkene. Okay, and if you look at this first reaction condition, so this is actually ozonolysis. By the way, I have already discussed many lectures related to this concept. I shall provide the link. Now, this is actually ozonolysis, but technically it is incomplete statement. It is actually reductive ozonolysis. What do I mean? So, in the second step, if you look at there is a zinc water. What it does? In ozonolysis, hydrogen peroxide is produced as one of the byproduct. So, hydrogen peroxide is oxidizing in nature. That oxidizes the produced carbonyl compound to the corresponding carboxylic acid derivative. I mean, aldehyde or ketone to carboxylic acid. So, in order to prevent that, this hydrogen peroxide is quenched by zinc water. Now, in some cases, some example, you may see that, okay, instead of zinc water, actually hydrogen peroxide is given. That you need to understand, okay, that's oxidizing ozonolysis. So, in that case, carboxylic acid will be the product. But here it is not given, so it will not go. So, in the first step, ozone carbon tetraclorate, whether CCL4 is a solvent. So, here it will break. It's a very easy trick. So, it break and put oxygen two sides. So it will result two molecule of ketone, cyclopentanone. This two is not needed in this uh, arrow-based conversion, so leave it. Now, next step. So next step is hydrogen nickel, carbonyl. We know nickel hydrogen can hydrogenate, means hydrogen addition across the pi bond. Actually, this is a double bond, carbon oxygen, where one sigma and one pi bond takes is that hydrogen addition across the pi bond and it result a alcohol. So here OH and here H. So this two hydrogen came from these hydrogen. By the way, hydrogen is the reducing agent reagent and this nickel is actually the catalyst. And generally for such reaction, they use Rani nickel. And Rani nickel is actually extremely porous hydrogen adsorbed nickel catalyst. So if you want to know further, please visit. I've already made a dedicated lecture on these two. Now, so okay, fine, alcohol in the third step, OH. By the way, if I say it's actually a secondary alcohol. So what happened in the first step, in presence of H plus, by the way, I never mentioned, I did not mention here what is the strength of this OH, it's a strong acid or weak acid, nothing. So follow the simple strategy means protonation. So what will be the product? Product will be the OH2 plus. Okay, an electronegative atom oxygen carrying positive charge. It is obviously not stable. So in the next step, what happened? Next step, dehydration takes place. Why? Because heating is given. I shall explain this heating part after some time. So what happened? One hydrogen from here will come out. So first step, these will come out and it will result a carbocation, secondary carbocation. Now this secondary carbocation will undergo beta hydrogen elimination by the way this is one beta carbon this is one beta carbon four total beta hydrogen exists so one of them will be eliminated in this way means h plus will go remove and it will produce cyclopentene alkene and by the way whatever acid from there you can understand it is needed catalytic amount so this step is nothing but dehydration of alcohol water removal means from here hydrogen and from here OH so actually this is the reaction so it is actually removal of water dehydration in presence of catalytic amount of acid and heating now we got the product now let's discuss what is the importance of heating in elimination reaction so this is this alcohol this hydrogen it is coming out in the form of water and by the way you can call it as a condensation reaction also because small molecule is produced during this reaction now how can i explain this with respect to this equation gibbs free energy equation delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s 
Now, if you look at here one molecule, here one molecule, here one molecule. So, from one molecule, you are getting two molecules. So, what is the delta S? 2 minus 1, it means 1, means it is actually a positive value. Now, enthalpically, I am not focusing. I don't know. But if you look at entropically, this reaction is positive. Means, now this delta S term is positive. Now, if you increase the temperature, then whole T delta S will be more positive. Big quantity multiplied by positive quantity is a big quantity. So, big positive. Now, before that, there is a negative. So, now, if you increase the temperature, then delta G will be more negative. So, that's the reason at high temperature, such kind of elimination reactions are preferred. Remember, student, this is a very important concept. At high temperature, elimination reactions are preferred. For example, you have Rx, RCH2, CH2X, and you are doing elimination reaction. For example, alcoholic KOH. That time you see heating mentioned. When nucleophilic substitution given, I mean aqueous cage, heating generally not mentioned. But for elimination reaction, heating mentioned. Why? Because from one molecule here, you get two molecule RCH, double bond CH2 plus HX. Actually, not HX, KX plus H2O. So, here what happened? Two molecules. So, you may consider one and two here. And here, KX plus H2. So, three molecule. Again, delta is plus one. That case also. So, that's why these elimination reactions are done at relatively higher temperature. So, this is because in higher temperature, delta G became more negative, then reaction became more spontaneous. Okay, so that is actually the concept behind this chemistry. Now, let's go to our answer. What is the major product? Obviously, alkene, cyclopentene. So, option C is the answer. Now, just imagine. You got this question in the exam hall. Here, student, I suggest go step by step in your mind. For that purpose, first enough study and enough practice needed. Now, ozonolysis, reductive ozonolysis. So, I guess you cut here. In your mind, okay, it's a cyclopentane on ketone. Next step, hydrogen nickel. So, it's a secondary alcohol. This much part is guarantee, no doubt. And the third step, H plus and heat. So, alcohol acid heat product is alkene so alcohol acid heat this is not possible ketone not possible now confusion will be c versus d alkene or diene so obviously it is alkene because only one oh is there okay now just imagine you are little confused how can you go further now ozonolysis First step, carbonyl compound. Second step, nickel hydrogen. Carbonyl compound will not survive. So, from that point, if I say, then okay, sir, option A gone. Second, okay, you can say in the second step, alcohol. Third step, acid it is given. Alcohol cannot survive. Heating is given. It is not a workup. Heating, so okay, this is not possible. So, competition is in between these and this. Two double bond means two living group. But here, one, this. So, actually this is called process of elimination. I suggest you learn this art by more, more, more practice. From four options, I reduce it to two options, which will help you. Such kind of practice will help you in exam hall to reduce the burden in your exam. Okay, so this is the overall discussion. I believe you have learned a lot. And if you really consider the content of my channel is worth it, then please help this channel to grow. And regarding any doubt about the logo of my channel, please visit this part. So see you in my next video. Bye-bye.